all eyes are on the tropics right now. And a lot of folks will say, well, now we're talking about things before they even become a storm. Well, our technology has gotten to such where we can detect these well off in the distance, even if it doesn't look like much of anything, because based on computer models, and they have gotten a lot better just in even the last couple of years, that the models have been indicating that this will likely become a named storm. Ida is the next one on the list. Now, what we see or don't see right now is that it is not any better organized. This is still not a name storm because it does not have a closed circulation, let alone a surface based closed circulation. Hurricane hunters will be investigating it tomorrow, and even as they gather more data from these storms, we're able to take that data, put it into computer models, and get better forecasts. And right now, you kind of see almost a broad circulation. This is all a trough. What we're waiting on is to see some type of circulation form along this trough. And right now, it's not doing that, and that is what the computer models are indicating. We probably wouldn't see much through the day to today, not tomorrow, maybe by Friday, but definitely on into the weekend. The big question is going to be where does a center actually form? And this is something we've been talking about. Now, what is looking more likely of our two scenarios is scenario number one, which is not great news for us because if it does form and move more toward the northern Yucatan or stay in the Yucatan Channel, which would be between Mexico and Cuba, it does look a little bit more likely based on models that it would take a track more toward Louisiana. Some of the earlier runs that I'm going back to this morning and the afternoon had it more south in the Yucatan and that was trending more toward Texas. So we'll kind of reevaluate the model, see where things are tomorrow. But just based on what we've seen just from this evening to tonight, maybe kind of shifting our area to watch to cover a little bit more of the north central Gulf Coast as opposed to the northwest. Here's what's going on on in the steering currents right now. Big ridge of high pressure is dominant across not only the Atlantic, but the southeast. That's going to start to weaken. That will allow the storm to begin making this turn toward the north. The big question, though, as we get into the weekend is how strong or weak this high is. If it's stronger, it pushes it more toward Texas. If it's weaker, maybe it takes a track more toward Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, really all along the Gulf Coast. Everyone is going to be watching this very, very closely because again, there isn't a center for the computer models to grab onto and to more accurately forecast. So yes, we've seen a shift in the models from Texas to Louisiana. Will we likely see a shift again tomorrow? Almost certain that we will and likely going to continue to see shifts in the models until that center of circulation gets better developed. So really at the moment, what we're looking at is a likelihood Texas to Louisiana that still puts us on the dirty, wet side of the storm. So an onshore flow with those strong winds out of the south and southeast would likely lead to coastal flooding. And of course, that does put us on the wet side. How much rain we see, how strong are those winds going to be? It all depends on where it eventually makes landfall. I know one of the other concerns a lot of folks are looking at is the fact that it could be making landfall Monday night or early Tuesday. So our time frame as of right now is only about five days and we are not looking at a named storm yet. So we may only really get about three days of a lead time from a named storm. It'll be something we watch very closely and pay very close attention to it this weekend.